Hello everyone, welcome. It's a minute out from Adamant of Code. Okay, so today the goal is just not to screw up. Precise, accurate, and um, yeah. Basically, if I don't screw up, then I do great. I mean, that kind of just makes sense, so. Okay, here we go. Oh, crap. Okay. Okay. Um Okay, so this is definitely a parsing problem.
push to the last stack. Um, open paren. If it's an end paren, then we do times b. Shoot, 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 shoot. This is in a stack, classic stack calculator. We have to um, T equals this, then so we get a value, we get a plus, and then we get another thing that we need to add to it. So um Maybe something like if the token is a parenthesis, then what's the way to do this? We see an eight, we assign that to A, then we see a plus. Um,
if it's an A, so if it's this um, LF P equals plus, um, return A plus compute the rest of the tokens, I guess. Oh, the recursion's wrong. Shoot. Okay, I should just be smarter about this. Um, maybe I should go back to the stacks, actually. Ah, maybe what I can do here is
So we get two, then If it's an integer, Let's see. Okay. But this doesn't seem quite right. Yeah, we should just have the accumulator here. Okay, um, see here.
Well, rip. No, and then it's two, then it's two. Okay, so the problem is, start at I, plus one, go to the end, X, I, so each of, each of these T's, Basically, these need to be tokens i. Actually, let's do t equals tokens i for clarity. And then here, Turn X. Okay, that was pretty slow. Addition before multiplication, cool. Um, This is ugly, but it, it's 
effective. Um, so let's do, so how do we deal with precedence? Okay, so here instead of terms, it's going to be a, a thingy like this. Ah, here we go. Terms. The term, if it's an open parentheses, then we do terms dot append to t. Okay. And then here, um, Addition terms to i plus one onwards um Instead of that, what we're going to do is we're going to return let's do that and then Oh, that's good.
5 plus so where is that 19 coming from Okay, so add null. First, we look and see if there are any pluses. And um, so nineteen plus plus eighty four, one hundred three terms. There we go.
shoot. Um, I think my rules are wrong. So we see a parenthesis. Two plus three plus, and then we call. And then this, this, this recursive call isn't working. Oh my gosh. T equals four plus four times five. Four times five, okay, so then this Four times five. Okay, so there we go. Okay, not top one thousand on either. That sucked. That was really bad. Nice job, nice job, McPanda. That was impressive. 22 and 33, 26, 43. This is the ugliest freaking code I have ever written to solve one of these problems. I did pretty good on the leaderboard today. What was the, I, I don't know how, I, I mean, actually this is pretty decent. 12, 1225 and 1219 on something like this. Yeah, honestly, McPanda, that was impressive because like I I did not expect you to to have ever seen this. And if you haven't ever seen any parsing like this, um, very very impressive. Um, nice top 1,000. Good job. Okay, so let me just before I screw something up. Add in some regression tests and we'll get rid of some of the prints here. And then let's clean this up because this is like some ugly stuff. I have to clean this up. This is just not a good way of doing add multiply, um, doing the order of operations thing. And then I forgot to, I, I was recursing on compute one instead of, or my first compute function instead of my second compute function. So that was kind of dumb. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the way to do this would be to actually parse it into a tree. I just wasn't, I just wasn't like, I didn't want to. I was like, this should be fine. And then I, so I was doing it, I was, I made the incorrect, 
jump to, oh, I can do this like a stack calculator. So I ended up just doing an implicit tree basically, which is kind of ugly to be perfectly honest, but it worked, I guess. Um, yeah, so so the way to do that, so the, the, basically if you're watching this later, don't do it how I did. That's the moral of the story. Um, how you're supposed to do these problems is parse it into an abstract syntax tree and evaluate the abstract syntax tree. I did none of that because, um, and honestly, I don't know that it's actually that bad of an idea like to, to just parse it as is. Um, because quite frankly, if you look at it, like you only ever are doing from the right, at least for part one. I mean, still making a tree would have been smart, but yeah, yeah, that would have been that would have been smart. I'm effectively implicitly navigating an abstract syntax tree with all this crap down here. Um, okay, so let's just do let's just add this. And yeah, I'm gonna definitely refactor this. I agree. Um, let's let's uh, let's actually do this correctly. Well, first of all, let me just explain how I solved it. And then we'll go back and refactor. <laughs> I think that's going to be the way to go. Um, <clears throat> all right, so what, what happened here? Um, first of all, my tokenize function was decent. I tried to go regex to the begin with, but it was just too much work. So I just switched back to um, a simple character by character parser. One nice thing about it is, if you look at your input, um, there's only single digit numbers. So because it's only single digit numbers, you can just iterate character by character, which is what I'm doing here. Um, let's see. Um, the other thing that we can do here, so, so that's basically all this is. If it's a space, we just don't care. If it's an operator, then we care. We add the token, otherwise we're gonna append. And then we tokenize the entire thing. This is, this is, I should have spent more time on this part and like actually parsed it into an AST. I'm kind of annoyed that I didn't do it into an AST to begin with. I mean, recursion's fine, but like parsing it into an AST is literally what I teach in PL. So that's kind of embarrassing. Anyway, the tokenize function, very, very simple. It just gives you tokens. Here, I'll, I'll print out the equations real quick. So yeah, uh, let's shoot. Um, let's just print out the first equation. So the first equation, as you can see, is print print five plus eight plus three. You know, it's it's this guy. It makes sense. And then basically, like um, these variables basically keep track of the operation node. So um, for those of you who don't know, let me just let me just explain real quick what I'm talking about about this AST. So so say um, if you have the follow location one plus two plus times three, for example, then the tree would look something like this. So you have a plus node at your top at the top and then on each branch you end up with a two sides. This side has one. The other side has a a multiplication node and then you end up with something along these lines, uh, where you have a two and a three as the two nodes here. So this is what I sh um, should have done, but didn't. So let me just actually wrap this in triple quotes here. This I should have used, but instead, I used, I navigated this tree 
using recursion, blood, sweat, and tears. So, um, yeah, so an abstract syntax tree, basically you convert your computation, so in this case, this one here, into some tree that you can actually manipulate. Um, you know, here we have a plus as the top node, one times, and then the, the two things that we have to multiply together. And then what you would do is you, you know, navigate this tree and do, you'd evaluate this recursively. I kind of did the recursion and the tree creation at the same time, and it sounds like a lot of people are also doing that. And it's probably a fast way to do it if you're smart, but I'm not, so it was kind of slow um, and error prone. And so basically, this compute thing um, is, is the function which computes a given node. And the idea is that if it's a multiplication, it, it basically, oh, one nice thing about the first part, by the way, that makes it a bit easier to do the implicit is that there is no order of operations except for parentheses. So that's very, very nice. So yeah, that's, that's, that's what an AST is. That's what you should use to solve these problems. What I did instead was really, really ugly. So basically what happens here is we have a compute function which takes in the set of tokens and the first token to look at. at initially it's zero. So we just start at the, we look through the entire equation and we look at the zeroth index. This function returns um, a tuple of int int. Just, that should work and make my linter happy. Okay, so um, the idea here is that we basically keep track of which operation we need to apply to the next value. Because um, if we have like, um, you know, if we ever see a multiplication symbol, then it means that the next, that the operation that we need to perform on whatever is on the left with whatever is on the right is a multiplication with the next element is, is a multiplication. So I'm just keeping track of these variables. If it happens that we are a an integer and we need to do a multiplication, so this would be the case if like, if we are in a situation like this for plus or times three where I is pointed here. Um, at a level of the computation, basically. Okay, so that's that's the idea. Um, yeah, so a level of computation is basically the same level of parenthes parenthesization. Yeah, so McPanda's mentioning that in this, with an AST, the order of operations is built into the tree structure itself. That's correct. And which is why I'm saying like, it's actually not that bad of an idea to um, do it implicitly because you can short circuit having to make, construct this tree by just doing the recursive version. So it's not actually that bad to do it this way um, because you're guaranteed that you don't have to ever construct this tree. Um, but for part two, if you wanna be fast on part two, that's probably the way to do it. But honestly, it was fine. Like, whatever. The order of the nice thing about it, it is that the order of operations is very, very simple. There's only three or there's only three things, and as long as you do those right, then you're fine. Um, so maybe it's actually not that bad of an idea. In all honesty, though, this isn't a terrible approach because. The is no real need to encode the order of operations in a tree. Yeah, so this is what McCann is saying in chat. Okay, so what happens here? Basically, um, if it's if it's an integer, then we should either set x to t. So this is like if 
this is the first number of a list um, right after a parenthesis, this would be the case. Otherwise, there must be an add or it must be an add or a multiply. So we would perform that operation. Um, and then we continue. We always continue, we always add i plus one. If we see an open parentheses, then we will do a recursive call to compute with i plus one. So this is saying start at the next token. And this returns us a new i. This returns the end of where it parsed. So say that we have, uh, let, me, let me actually annotate this. Parameters, tokens is the list of tokens i the index to start computing at and then returns the computation result up to the next end parentheses and a tuple of and the index at which we finish parsing, computing. So that's all that this is doing. Um, so actually here, we can combine these two cases. There we go. That's pretty, actually kind of nice. Um, so call the compute function. We can um, recursively call the function to compute the value inside the parentheses. So, so this is, that's all that this is doing. the necessary, necessary operation on x. Okay, and then basically if it's a multiplication or an addition then uh, symbol, then we set is mole um, and is add accordingly. Um, and it's important to set it to false. I had that bug earlier where it would set it to true and then it would always be true and it would always multiply. Um, and then if it's an end parentheses, then what we do is um, we return the X, which is the accumulation, the value, and then I, which is just your whole, um, uh, basically the end of your, end of where you were evaluating. And then down here, the answer is gonna be in the first element we just extract it out it's a tuple like that and then we add it to the answer the the problem has you just sum up let's see it says what is the sum of the resulting values so and that's the same thing down here except we're going to do compute 2 compute 2 is a little bit different because the so the difference in part 1 and part 2 is that now we have to worry about order of operations so we do pluses before times and we do, um, that's it. That's literally it. Those are the only two, two rules. So um, what I'm doing is uh, instead of doing the accumulator, I am just flattening out, um, I'm flattening out the, this level of computation. So a level again is within a parentheses or the top level. Um, into a single terms array. So McPanda, you, you, you mentioned that you um, stored both an array of operands and values. I'm just storing them all in one array and then doing this add mole function, which is kind of stupid, but it worked. This was pretty error prone. I kind of wasted a little bit of time on this, but honestly, I'm okay with it. It wasn't that bad. I did actually gain a couple of um, places on the global leaderboard. Four, six places there. 
So I'm pretty happy with that. And so let me just actually show you what what terms looks like. So you can see like it's it's just this. It's all flattened out. Um, let me So, shoot, this isn't very readable, is it? Well, okay, so this is actually fairly readable. See, it's eight plus, and then you have this whole parenthesized expression here. So this will evaluate to 28, 90, 98, I guess. Um, so, you know, that's, that's basically what it's saying here. Um, and so, yeah, that's the idea. And... It's very similar. If it's a if it's an integer, then we just append it to the terms. If it's an open parentheses, then we compute the term and add it to the term list. If it's an in parentheses, what well, we actually have to compute our terms list. We have to do the evaluation using addmol, and this is is named that because it does addition before multiplication. Um, and then we basically return out of the function. So this will only happen if there's already been a recursive call to compute to. So that's how why this works. And then we return admol, which is like gonna compute our result, and then i, which is again where we were able to parse up to. And then that's used here to reset i and go to the next token. If it's plus or times, then we just append it as well to t or Let's do that. And then we just compute. We just add them together. So that's that's the way to do this. Um, oh, one last thing. How does this work? Basically, there's a while loop that waits until there's only one term left. And I'm just going through if there's any pluses in the terms, then I go and find the first one. And then look back one and forward one. Those are the two things that need to be added together. Add them and then set the terms equal to um, terms i minus one, the new term, and then the i plus two. So this one's this one's exclusive. This actually kicked me in the butt a couple times because I, I was doing i minus two, which is wrong. You need i minus one um, because it's um, exclusive here. And then you need i plus two because i plus one is just your, uh, is the this term here. So you want the term afterwards. So that was a little bit un uh, unfortunate that I had to spend so much time debugging that. And then I did the same mistake down here because I copy pasted it. Yeah, this is this isn't great. This isn't great. But um, I think what we'll do here is I will commit this. And then what we'll do is we'll make a new um, new file called um, well let's do mv18 actually so the other way of doing this is to is to use an abstract syntax tree. So let's just go ahead and paste in all of that. Okay, and then so let's talk about how that would work. Um, So let's represent our tree, I guess, as tuples, maybe. Yeah, it should be fine. I did not 
use one of these to solve, but this solution uses them. Oh, shoot. Let's do that in the new one. And we'll copy, we'll copy actually this all over for part one. Um, ASTs are much more maintainable and it is, it would be a lot easier to expand upon the syntax if we had an AST to work with. Okay, so um, let's, so this is a tokenizer. Effectively then what we want is a parse, a parser as well. Um, and let me, let me actually pull this up a little bit to the, to the top. And uh, we can, Just do that. And let me actually copy over my results. Okay. So yeah, the, the, the keys to input parsing generally, uh, or you know, parsing in general, uh, is that you um, you tend to use an uh, uh, a parser, or uh, you tend to use a tokenizer, and then you use a parser. So a tokenizer gives you a list of tokens. Tokens are just very very simple objects that represent, you know, either in this case the numbers or the operators. And then what you do is you create a parser, which turns this list of tokens into a tree, specifically this kind of a tree. So let's do that. Um, and I'll implement it actually down in here because there's actually gonna be two parsers. And it takes in token lists and um, okay, so this is going to be a recursive function, this parser. If it's an integer, then we'll basically what we're going to say, what we're going to do is just return tokens i, okay? So that's the simplest case. Um, and then let me let me update the answer. I'll just basically copy in my my thing from here, except for parse, and then we'll also have a def. Uh, we'll just return zero for now. And let's just do this just so we can, we can know when we've gotten to the right place. And um, so let's go back to our parser. If it's just an integer, we return it. If in R, really what we need to do is left equals zero. 
So this will keep the left hand side of the operation. If tokens i in times equals, then tokens dot then basically what we're going to do is we're going to return a tuple. Um, we're basically going to represent our tree as a, as a tuple of uh, a bunch of nested tuples. Um, so the first, let me let me annotate this. So let me copy this example here. And basically, so the, the, the tree for this would be plus, comma, and then the two operands are the next two arguments, basically. One, comma, and then another tuple times um, two, three. Okay, so then um, tokens i left, and then what we'll do is we'll call parse again on the rest of the tokens. Which are gonna be i plus one. And that gets us a lot of the way there. Um, if tokens i equals open parentheses, oh my gosh, wrong way, then we're just going to return tokens. Um, I and then parse um, tokens i plus one again. So uh, really, let me actually pull this down. Hello, epsilon. Welcome in. I'm actually so I actually solved. I I used recurse a um recursive implicit traversal of the tree rather than what i'm doing right now which is trying to convert it to an actual real abstract syntax tree um So uh, let's see here. So this is actually going to be, we, we don't really actually have to do anything here. We can just kind of return the entire parse thing here. In paren, then what we have to do here is So, okay, we see an open parentheses, then we see one of these. So we set left. Then we see a multiplication. So we will do a mul with a two. 
and parse the rest of this. So if we see an in paren, yeah, then we just return left. Let's just try parsing the, the this list of tokens, one plus two for now, and parse from zero. Oh, there. Oh, that's not good. Let's see here. This is really confusing. What? Oh, um. <laughs> so we get one. Oh. Shoot. Got to do this. And then we need to do I plus equals one. And then what we can do here, so something's wrong. One plus two. Oh, at the very end. Um, well, wait a second. This should have. Oh, wow. This needs to be a plus. Good job, me. Plus zero and none. That's wrong. Plus left. Do we get there? Oh, that's not good either. Oh, everything's a string. Shoot. Wow, guys. Um, of course. I need to, you know, pass in the correct thing from my parser. So it's one and none. That's problematic. Parse of this. There we go. We need to, at the very end, return left if, if we get there. Okay, so that's that's our parser. Uh, let me actually just do something more complicated. Two, let's, uh, and then plus three, for example. And you can see it's giving us what we want. Um, so if we do a multiplication out here, um, the tree is is as we want. Um, let's get rid of these parentheses and, and check that as well. So we should get um, a star one and then plus two, three. And even if I change this to a plus and this one to a times, order of operations is not considered for part one. So um, that, that'll just work. Okay, so that's our, that's our parse. Now we have to evaluate a tree. And I'll just print out each tree. So this is a pretty nice thing to look at, right? We can easily evaluate this. In fact, we can actually share this evaluation of a tree outside. So all that's going to change uh, between part one and part two is how we parse the input. Um, let me add that as a note up here.
uh, parsing into a an AST is that we can use the same evalue function to evaluate um, both part one and part two. We can also use the same we only need to change the parser. Ah, uh, yeah. So I, I, uh, when I did it, I didn't even really have a parse step when I originally solved it. Um, so McPanda said that he did the exact opposite. He he did the parse step shared, and then did the evaluation steps differently. Um, I would say so. I, I shared my tokenizer. I did share my tokenizer. So this tokenizer basically splits it up into tokens, but my evaluator um, was was not was not shared. Well, my evaluator and my parser were the same thing basically. I had this compute function which did both the evaluation and the parsing. Yeah, anyway, by the way, so so terminology wise, let me actually add another note. Um, let me move this up. I really like this problem. This was a really, really good problem. Um, so the the key is a few terms. Uh, so tokens are just are a list of or stream of primitive entities um, in the language, I guess. In our case, the things we care about are operators plus minus plus and times, and then the two parentheses. And operands which are just the integers. Um, a parser takes a list of tokens and turns it into an AST. See below. An evaluator is gonna take a part uh, AST and turn it into and evaluate it. And AS, so then, then this is the explanation of AST that I had earlier. Okay, so moving back down to here. Um, and let's look at our evaluator. So basically, um, it's now in this kind of form more along the lines of, well, it's recursive and it, it's more along the lines of what a st stack calculator would give you, for example. So, um, we just have to look at the head of the tree, the first element of the tree. So in this case, if tree zero equals plus, then return, um, well, so these are gonna be our non-base cases. We'll talk about our base case in just a minute. Return tree one, 
evaluate tree one plus evaluate tree two. This is going to be problematic if we just have integers, so we need to use that as a base case. If is instance tree int return tree l if, and then if it's a multiplication, then all we're going to do is change this to a multiplication. Again, this looks definitely way nicer, right? Um, except for it's wrong. So what's going on? Shoot, guys, what did I do? Times eight, seven. Let's go back to our run test. 46, that's wrong. Um, and it's this example. Oh, I think, so times, So we have two plus two times three. Let me just copy this step down here. So two times So this should go first, so that should be six. Oh shoot, my parser's wrong. Shoot guys, my parser's wrong. Oh, because it's Yeah, my parser is totally wrong. It's right recursive, not left recursive. Or whatever it is, it's the I did the wrong recursive. Shoot, how am I going to fix this? <laughs> yeah, see the associativity is that 2 is associated with the multiplication of this entire thing instead of just the, the plus. So this is fine. It's just that then the three needs to be associated with the two. So really the tree here should be, let me, um, Let's just do another list of times two plus three or two, sorry, two times three plus four times five. equals um, so what we want is that it'll be a plus and then two times two three and then on the other side we want it to be times four five which is going to fail, obviously, since I wrote my parser wrong. So I'm thinking that maybe what we should do is keep like a stack. Let me think here. <clears throat> Let's do this, op equals none, 
equals tokens i. And then here, if op is not none, then we are going to return the operation left and then tokens i. So this will not get us quite there because um, So that's if it's a number. If it's one of these things, then if it's an in parentheses, then we need to do basically the same thing. Or no, we need to return left. That makes sense. But here, um, basically, we almost need like a left. initialized um, return parse tokens i plus one and then that's our left Okay, uh, as I'm doing this, I'm realizing, yeah, it's actually not that bad of an idea to just do it like this. <laughs> um, it works out pretty well, actually. Um, oh, okay, so the very end. If op is not none, turn left. No, no, no. Return uh, Oh shoot, let me let's do this Parse that parse Zero, zero. It's an int. So then we go on to the next one, which is going to be here. So parse, it's a times. We get the op equals tokens one, and the next one's a three. So the is not none. Okay, let's see. So zero, one, two. Okay, op is not none, which makes sense. It's three, so this is going to be parse tokens print. So our, our left should be times two, three. Okay, that's good. So then we start at three, zero, one, two, three. Then we have a plus. So then we have a plus, and then we do three, four. Then we have a parentheses. Then we do uh, five, six, seven, one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven is not none. So we then parse starting at eight. Eight is here, right? That's got to be right. Go eight. Okay, 
And then that returns times four five. We, we somehow lost track of this left. Um, I think it basically involves this again. Um, if the op is not none, Oh, um, no, not quite. Then op, comma, left, comma, maybe something like that. Oh, that's giving me the right answer, right? I think 26 should be right. Run 18, shoot. Darn it, this is like hard. This parser is annoying. Um, let's see here, let's expand this. Let's just move this back, I guess, to here or something. Um, and so this should then become times two and then a tuple containing a plus and then times four, five and then a three here. Okay, and so this is where it breaks down. Um, this actually, what does this actually parse to? Oh, the three is lost. The plus three is lost. Well, shoot, that's unfortunate, guys. So two, four, five. Let's see, how do we how would we actually do this? Three, four, five, six.
okay, let's let's reconsider this again. So if it's an integer, so if it's just an integer, we will set that to the left. Okay. Let me do a times. I wonder, can we just reverse this and it'll work? I'd rather not. I'd rather not reverse it. I'd rather do it forward just because it, it's kind of fun, more fun. Um, but I'm having a a bit of trouble figuring out how exactly to do this parser. So let me let me just actually um, Okay. Um, let me let me uh, let me move this to to here. Um. I uh, um uh to solve tonight but uh if I were doing this for maintenance for a real project or job I would use ASTs since they are much, much more maintainable. However, So let me let me just restore these real quick. In all honesty, it wasn't it uh, this is a decent approach because there's no real need to encode the order of operation in the tree and the syntax is very simple. Um yeah I think that's about it. We'll we'll just leave it there. I think this is pretty good. Um Let's actually see if there's a way to improve this.
Okay, I might come back to trying to use a parser at a later time, but now that I've tried it, it this is actually like just just fine. Um, it's way faster. It was a good idea to go with this. Um, so I'm gonna I'm pretty happy with it. So what went wrong? Honestly, not much. Not much. I was just kind of slow. Um, and floundered a little bit, ran around trying to figure out how to implement my um, evaluation function. And I, I tried a bunch of different things, but I think it was pretty good overall. I'm not too disappointed with how that went. So we'll leave it as is um, for now. And uh, um, maybe I'll come back and do the AST version at a later date. Um, this was pretty, pretty good. So, yeah, so solid day. I needed to be another four minutes faster. Yeah, I wasn't, that wasn't happening. Um, okay. Thank you all for watching. If you are, um, if you liked it or found it educational, please give it a thumbs up and come over and follow me on Twitch where I'm doing this every single day. I'll be back again for day 19.